Good day to you from me, Bernie B in Hamilton's. I've got a wall that's peeling, bubbling. I need to know what's causing it. But I think the first thing when you have such a problem is get off the bubbles, the peeling, expose as much of the problem as possible, and then undertake an investigation. So let's get started. It's worse than we think. Where it doesn't want to come off, leave it alone. The paint is sound over there. Get off the looseness. Okay, so you've scraped and exposed all the bubbling paint. If you're a contractor, I would advise you to invest in one of these items. It's a moisture meter. And it's able to read the moisture levels on various substrates, including wood, concrete. It's worth it. It just tells you how much damp there is within the wall, and then you know what to do going forward. Let it dry out before you prime, etc. So get one of these moisture meters. It's really a good investment, even if you're a homeowner. They retail for around eight, nine hundred rand. Okay, that beeping means in this area it's reasonably still dampish. I'm getting a moisture percentage of around 20. And to paint or prime a wall, your moisture reading should be below, I'd say, 12%. So put a fan on it if you have to, dry out that area, but investigate where the problem is coming from. Once we've done all the investigations, we've let the wall dry out, then we are ready to primer these bare sections with, I would recommend, a good damp sealer. Okay, so the problem is on the outside. We've seen where the paving meets the wall. There's quite a gap and water is running down into the wall. And this is what's creating the problem on the inside where we've scraped. So we've scraped and now that area is dry. We've let it dry out. And I'm going to prime it with damp sealer. Now, I prefer an oil-based damp sealer. There are water-based damp sealers on the market, but follow the instructions. Now, with a solvent-based, which is a terps-based damp sealer, we thin the first coat. 10% with turpentine. So add just a little bit of turps to your damp sealer, mix it up well, and that first coat thinned is for penetration into that raw area. We leave that overnight, and then we put a second coat of damp sealer unthinned before leaving it for another 24 hours before we finally paint over it. And painting over it could be another issue, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so one coat of our thinned out damp seal for the first coat, and I'm using Hamilton's Utility Brush, which is a great DIY brush, matching quality with affordability, and it's durable for everyday use. So let's get this damp sealer, this thinned damp sealer. Don't forget the drop sheets, it could get messy. We've just applied our second coat. We're going to leave that overnight to dry. If you remember the color, we've got an old tin, take it in where you buy the paint and show them the color that you bought before so you can get exactly what you got before. If you can't find a tin, keep one of the scrapings, take it into a paint shop, and a good tinter should be able to match the color as close as possible. But regardless whether it's matched or you bought it as a standard, paint from one end of the wall to the other wall. No touch-ups, because touch-ups are noticeable with a fresh coating compared to the old paint, even if it was standard, you're going to notice it. So two coats damp seal, leave 24 hours between each coat, get your color on corner to corner, no touch up. Thank you from me, Bernie B and Hamilton's for that perfect finish.